But let's now go to Tarek Sherkawi from Rabat in Morocco. He's the manager for TRT World's Research Center. Tarek, we were speaking earlier about all of the comparisons that can be made between the situation now in Tunisia and that of Egypt. And of course, for those who watch this region, Tunisia sparked the Arab Spring. It fought so hard for democracy, as did Egypt. Why are we seeing this happening? Well, um, I think uh, it's it's a, it's a very important uh, question. I think uh, there are forces, both internal and external, uh, that don't want uh, democracy to prevail in the region, in the country and in the region. Uh, so uh, like the situation in Egypt, uh, the fall of uh, the former dictator uh, Hosni Mubarak was a, a very a re a big uh, alarm um, uh, sound in 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 uh, some areas of the Gulf region, especially the UAE and other places, and these um, autocracies that exist have now become very concerned that uh, the, the 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 toppling of dictators and the prevalence of democracy in the region is going to be a, a direct threat to them and to their rule, and therefore they decided to fight uh, against uh, democratic movements and democratic experiments in the region um, and pour enormous amounts of money uh, and funding for uh, to various uh, players, agents provocateurs, and uh, all um, counter-democratic uh, uh, movements. And uh, I think because of the, le the high levels of poverty, high levels of uh, unemployment in the region, they succeeded to enroll quite a few. And we have seen this uh, unfold in uh, in Egypt, where um, the, the army was already very powerful. And um, even with the democratic transition, the army was still um, uh, the, the major player in, 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 in the game. And they managed to um, stay uh, abreast of any developments and control the, the whole situation. And later on, when they decided that the time was right and uh, with the pressure that keeps coming from uh, different players in the Gulf region and other places, they decided to go ahead and uh, uh, topple uh, the late President Morsi, the first democratically elected president uh, in Egypt, in the history of Egypt. And uh, we now we are witnessing uh, some similarities in the situation. It's a little bit different because Tunisia, the army, and uh, has never been that powerful. Uh, it's an institution also that has never been really part of the repression. Uh, former dictators uh, Bourguiba and Ben Ali relied on the on the police and the intelligence services to repress um, the people and uh, maintain their dictatorship. So the the military institution was actually a major uh, a major factor in the success of the 2011 uh, uprising in Tunisia. And and um, therefore, because there was no uh, killed in the streets, no people killed and executed extrajudicially in, 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 in the streets, people uh, were more, um, actually, they had this boost and, right. and uh, believed in the, in the success of their experiment. So there are similarities and there are differences. Sure. But I think there are a lot of uh, similarities between uh, both situations that we need to uh, observe uh, very closely. And for example, in this, in the case of Egypt, Mubarak ruled for decades. Uh, there was jubilation once they they got onto a path of democracy and had, for a time, a functioning democracy. It was though a very short time, and now we've seen this rapid return to autocracy. How is yeah. this acceptable? And and surely Tunisia does not want to see this happen there. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, well, you know, uh, the, the, the people on the streets initially in, in back in the early days of the Arab Spring or the Arab uprisings, uh, where they had there, there were multiple demands. Uh, some of the people demanded uh, the return of democracy or the establishment of democracy and, and uh, civil rights and human rights and, and civil freedoms and media freedoms and all that. But, but a lot of people, actually, the, the average Joe in the street, the average Mohammed in the street, mm. uh, was mainly concerned about the, the, the improvement of the economic conditions. And I think this is the problem with democracy. Democracy works, but it works at a slow pace because there are a lot of compromises to be made. There are a lot of discussions, a lot 
lot of debates between different forces. So it takes time to uh, establish a successful economic uh, experiment or, or, or uh, uh, economic platform that is uh, that is uh, growing fast and, and, and giving employment and social benefits to people. So because of that, um, the UAE and other forces are, are trying to uh, discourage people to follow the, the path of democracy. They are, they're pumping money into the forces that are against democracy, but they're also uh, using their media. They have dozens of media, uh, an Arabic-speaking media or English-speaking media, and, and they are reaching out to people to, uh, to kind of tell them the message, the narrative that is that the Arab Spring has failed, that you got nothing, everything is is even worse than before. And in some aspects, there might be some truth in, in this, because the economy has failed to, to, to pick up, has failed to improve uh, post-2011. Uh, but let us not forget, in the case of Tunisia, there were a lot of terrorist uh, attacks uh, that are very uh, suspicious from Daesh and from other places. Um, that have destroyed the, the economic uh, platform that, re that is represented by, by tourism and, and, and a lot of the dividends that were coming from, uh, from this, uh, this uh, very lucrative uh, economic uh, activity has disappeared, has dwindled for, for quite some time. And this has even affected the other sectors as well. So, so there is a domino uh, kind of effect and, and sometimes uh, I think um, the, 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 the politicians the, from different uh, sectors or different political uh, spectrum needs to be mindful that the economic situation, the social situation is extremely important in order for people to remain um, committed to democracy and remain in the path of democracy. You know, it's been a real lesson for the world over the past two decades that democracy has its big loopholes. There are supposed to be these backstops. Uh, there's supposed to be these checks and balances. But we also see this in Europe and even in the United States, that it can be too easy to exploit power. It can be too easy to consolidate power. Uh, and this Tunisia situation now could be one more of those examples that you can establish a democracy, but you better have strong checks and balances. Absolutely. This is 100 uh, percent spot on. Uh, I mean, let us just not forget, I mean, the United States back in January was on the verge of uh, another, another coup exactly. uh, by a mob. Yeah, so, so this is why I, I, would, I would really um, advise uh, the viewers to be uh, vigilant when it comes to these images of mobs and counter mobs, because this is, this is, there is no um, absolutely, I mean, no credence to these movements, because it, there is a lot of manipulation, there is a lot of disinformation, and, and, and this is why democracy has to be the, 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 a, a play field that is, uh, that is even for all players. Because if we don't want something to happen in our societies, if we don't like some kind of practices in our societies, the, 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 uh, the, the, the polls should be the answer to whatever we want. And we have to have the power of mobilization and we have to work politically in order to achieve those aims and, and objectives. But if we everybody uh, disliking something relies on, 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 on force, on violence or on mobs, that's not acceptable. And, uh, and I think that we should be really vigilant across the board and not just in Tunisia, everywhere, because, because democracy remains the best the best platform, political platform for, uh, you know, for, for societies to excel and, and, and move ahead. Dictatorship, uh, we, we know what dictatorship is, and we know the negative effects and nefarious effects of dictatorship with uh, every dictatorship is suffering. And we, I, I can bring you uh, hundreds of, uh, of examples, but I, I'm sure the, 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 the viewers will be bored by that. But it's definitely the case that dictatorship is 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 this problem for for the citizens. It it creates a lot of um, of uh, and, uh, you know frictions, it, it, a lot of um, uh, problems for for the the average citizen, and and the repression is 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 way um, above any kind of acceptable level. So I think people need to be careful with that. Yeah, well put, Tark. And I think these things need to be said and analyzed as we're seeing what could very well be a coup occurring before our eyes in Tunisia. Thank you for joining us.